Hello world, you've reached uh, Chuck LeMayhew. This is with Dragon Sailing. I'm part of the DF Racing Team, and we are here to de debut the new Dragon Force 65 version 6. Before we do that, we want to introduce you to our team. This is Buzz Coleman. Hi. Mike Weston. Hi. Foy. <laughs> Gigs. Gigs. Johnson. Johnson. Stanley. Stanley. The owner of Joyway. Everybody knows Timmy. Hi. <laughs> and lead designer John Tisch. Good afternoon. John, uh, walk us through the uh, boat and let us tell us what's going on with it. Yeah, this well. This is the new uh, 65. Yeah, welcome to the new 65. And the first thing you'll notice is it looks now like a scaled down 95. It's not just a paint job. The hull's actually been remolded. And uh, Joy's Way have invested a lot more money in the tooling for the new mold to bring it up to the standard of the 95 hull. Uh, you're all aware of problems in the past with the versions, earlier versions with the weak bows. You can feel this bow now, it's absolutely solid. The good thing is the boat is exactly the same shape underneath, the same weight, everything is in the same position. Uh, we've sailed the new one against the old version extensively and we don't notice any performance difference for the better or worse. So no, no fears there that your old boat is uncompetitive anymore. The new one is just a major upgrade in quality throughout the whole boat. So the first thing you'll notice is the new hull. We've got the chamfered gunnel, as on the 95, and that now means we've lost the, the moulding mark from the old tooling. In the tooling, the hull and deck mould are now joined along here, and that's fared off when the boat's painted. Um, we've got the recess eyes in the foredeck, as on the 95. The effect there is to help stiffen the deck a little bit there. Uh, it was never really a weak point, but it's a feature we have on the 95, so that carries over. You'll notice the new shape bow bumper. Um, it does make the bow of the boat look a little bit different. It looks sharper. Uh, but again, I can assure you that the whole shape is exactly the same as the old boat. And going backwards down the hull, the shape of the transom is slightly different to the older one. It's a slightly steeper angle here and a, and a different radius. That's really just a, a moulding issue to keep the quality of the, the spread of material in the boat a lot more consistent than the, the old boat. That's the main advantage of the new tooling, is that Joy's Way can control the distribution of material in the boat when it's blow moulded uh, with this more advanced tooling, as I said. The bow is the major benefactor here. I can't see us ever having a problem if this quality is, is kept up. So white is the new colour. This is a standard colour now. The graphics you'll notice are updated to match the 95. So we now have a, a much stronger family appearance for the two boats. The keel and bulb are identical, the same, exactly the same product as the old boat, and the rudder is identical as well, it's the same product. One improvement that we have made is the rudder tube fitting in the hull has been redesigned. The old, on the older boats, the, 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 the fit of the rudder was sometimes a bit loose, sometimes a bit too tight, a little bit inconsistent. That's now been rectified. The two mouldings here are actually interlocked top and bottom, so the, the fit should be a lot more consistent from now on. That's, that's always been a, a talking point in the past. Inside the boat, which we can't really show you too clearly here, but there's a new servo tray, single piece moulding, as on the 95. Again, it's a lot stiffer than the old dual plastic trays. Everything's arranged so there's no obstruction to the steering arm or the switch connector so everything runs friction free there uh, one thing you can't see here but the battery box the standard battery box that comes with the boat fits into a recess or a hole in the servo tray 
if you position your battery like we all do by the fin box, there is now a, a blanking plate that just clips into the new servo tray and gives you a nice flat area to put the receiver onto. And they've even supplied bits of self-adhesive Velcro so you can fix all these things on. The thing's complete these days. The new servo tray will fit the older plastic tray boats. Its fixing points are exactly the same. There is one extra product you'll need to retrofit it to your boat, and that is an updated switch connection rod that is available as a separate item uh, and the part number you can get from your distributor or dealer. So old boats are very easily converted to the new uh, servo tray. The winch is the same winch that we've always had, so no performance gain there. Um, it's generally a reliable item, so uh, no, no need to change that one. The rudder servo has proved inconsistent in the past. This is a new digital rudder servo, which has about 10% more torque, and it has a new motor and the new circuit board. So we're hoping that this is a, a more reliable uh, servo than the older one. So that's really the looking at the hull of the boat and, and the deck fittings. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention there, all the eyelets, all the deck eyes now have a solid plastic insert built into the hull as uh, the 95 hull. So no need, there shouldn't be any need anymore to waterproof these eyes, everything from standard. The boat should be uh, totally waterproof. Certainly the pre-production samples that we've been serving have been absolutely blown dry. So that's good. You'll notice here that you can see the plastic plug and that's due to the moulding process. It's, it's so close to the edge of the boat that it would have, if it had been moulded into the hull, it would have deformed the whole surface. So it's, it's inserted later on. Again, totally waterproof. As you'd be aware, if you're a 95 sailor, we changed the rules during the year to allow a third string on the main sheet driver. And this comes as standard with the new 65. There is a, a plate in here which fastens up through the, the keel bolt and then has a barrier adjuster. What this is for is to lock the position of the ring to stop it being pulled backwards, which means the main sheet is always shooting at 90 degrees to the ring, which puts a lot less strain on the winch when it's close hauled. So that again should be a reliability improvement for the winch. You'll notice when we get to the rig now with the big change is the new goose neck pick and strap. It's a two part plastic moulding with uh, adjusters here. The front adjuster is a locking nut and then you adjust with this one. There's no slop in it, it's really positive. Get your adjustment and then lock up with the front one again. Absolutely solid. Uh, less metal in the system now, less, less corrosion issue there. Uh, that should prove a really, a really nice popular fitting. In terms of other changes on the rig, well the mast is the same, nothing changing there. The boom tube is exactly the same, the fittings on the boom tube are the same. Another change at the top, the carbon mast crank. Again, this is echoing the 95. Uh, a new mast head plug, we're all very flush fitting. Uh, we've lost the swivel from the mast head, but uh, it was a bit too much friction in the swivel anyway, so I don't think we've lost anything there. Uh, it certainly works well on the, on the 95. So a nice and neat black stair crane. One size fits the A, B and C rig, and then we'll come to the A plus rig shortly, but there's a different size for that. Another thing you'll notice straight away are the new sails. Uh, these are standard Mylar sails now from Joy's Way. Very nicely finished off, 50 micron Mylar, uh, printed flow stripes, really good, a big, big improvement there. The whole thing just looks so much better. On the jib boom, we've redesigned the front end fitting. So it doesn't it doesn't matter which way if you have the fitting now. And we now have a properly shaped metal hook for fixing the jib tack onto. So no knot tying there. 
And again, at the back end of the booms, the crew rings are similar to the ones on the 95, but made from a, a thinner gauge wire, which will go through most sailmakers' small pringles. So we've got the same, same rig arrangement, both adjustments here at the top. So really, as you can see, it's just an overall huge quality improvement and should be no performance change. Not, certainly nothing that we can detect. The weight of the boat, again, as I say, is within range of the old boats. So no fear that your old boats are in any way disadvantaged. The new rig components will be available shortly, uh, around the same time as the boats arrive. And of course, the new rig components will fit the, the old boats, no problem there. There is a new transmitter for the ready to race versions. Um, this is a really nice full size transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz, and it has a manual adjuster for each of the channels. So you just put a screwdriver into it, either channel that you're adjusting, and you have control over the total throw of that servo. So you can control the amount of throw on the sheeting line. You can't control each end independently, it's not a true endpoint adjustment system, but it's effective for what the boat requires. The same with the rudder, you can just adjust total travel side to side on the rudder server. So, as standard, uh, the transmitter now does everything it needs to do, and it certainly feels nice. Uh, we've sailed quite a lot with it, and it's, it's good for the job now, much better than the old small flat transmitter. So I think I've taken you through the main points. If anybody's out there, if you have any, any queries, Chuck can see the screen, we'll read them out and we can Guys, discuss if there's it. anybody that's online and has a question, we'll take questions now. Um, until I get any, I'll tell you that one of the ideas, and there's, there's Mike Weston, photobombing, there it is. Uh, cost of the boat. We're still determining that, but I can tell you that in the U.S. Peter, um, I'm going to charge $199 U.S. for the ready-to-race version. Um, so that's going to be the cost, roughly. You can extrapolate that worldwide to whatever. Uh, but we're trying to keep, obviously, we're all cognizant of the fact that it's still got to be a low-cost entry, entry boat, but we've tried to improve it so that it's a class ready boat more and more importantly and then as you get the package it's what you want if you're a beginning sailor or even an experienced racer yeah and talking about the package uh, the packaging itself again this is uh, just designed but it's upgraded to look like the, old, the, the current 95 box so we've got a strong family look again and the instruction manual has been completely rewritten and if you follow it word for word you should have a properly set up well tuned 65 at the end of it everything's in there uh, all dimensions for rigging so that hopefully is a big improvement for first timers one additional uh, yeah one additional uh, change for the 65 for this year we, we will have a bigger rig available, the A plus rig. This is as a result of some countries that generally sail in light weather and the 65 has never been considered a good light weather boat. So we needed, globally, we needed a, a bigger rig for the boat. And we, we've done that by not increasing the overall height of the rig. The mast is the same height. <laughs> An illustration coming up here. Yeah, here we have the, the standard A rig sail plan. The A plus rig is the same height, but it has a mast head jib. It has a wider head on the, the main sail, and both booms are approximately 10 millimeters longer and lower in the A rig booms. The overall effect is, I think it's 2,900 square centimeters of sail area which is about a third up on the A-Rig. But the good thing is, it will still fit into your existing sail bag. So no, no issues with traveling with it. And we sailed a lot with it. It's a really nicely balanced rig. 
and it works very well up to about 11 miles an hour of wind. It just pulls a lot more to windward. And you can tack the boat much easier, the boat accelerates out of attack, and generally it will just go out a bit quicker and point a bit higher. It's a really, it's a really nice rig to use. It doesn't make the air rig obsolete because that still has uh, from 7 to 17 miles an hour good wind range. And they, as we know, you can still sail the air rig up to quite strong winds and the beam sea kicking. So it's a good additional rig, but it's also conveniently packaged. So just to clarify, the new uh, the new boat will ship with a standard A rig. Yeah, it ships with this, with the standard A. We did consider shipping with the A and the A plus, but that just puts the retail price up and makes it look uh, expensive. And it's it's a rig really that you need to make a decision whether you not at club or national level. It's not a uh, a requirement, but uh, right. some it, some clubs do sail the boat as a one design as it as it comes, and that's that's fine. Keep on doing it, Mike. If you can, um, we got a request to see the more in depth on the servo traffic and pop this open. So yeah, see if we can take the tray off. Take the tray off here and see if we can. Just Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna take a take it so you can get a more in-depth look at the new servo tray, which is actually fairly awesome. For those of you that are familiar with the Dragon Flight, this tray is gonna look very sim similar. Um, it's very rigid, so it doesn't sway at all. So when the rudder arm, the rudder arm's a straight shot, back, sorry, rudder arm's a straight shot back to the, to the arm. So hopefully that'll do a lot, lot better as far as um, preventing any sort of faults. And yes, ha yeah, Baron, that's a new clear hatch cover. Does not fit the versions, the earlier versions. Um, but, before you answer the question, uh, the new servo tray will be available as an upgrade and it will fit previous versions. So if you have a version, older version 3 through 5 Dragon Force, you can purchase the new tray and it will fit. And so we'll have an upgrade kit available. And you can either use your existing arm or you can buy the new arm uh, for the boat. It's, it's totally your option. That's the new tray. Other than that, um, the new A plus rig, the, the boats will be available generally worldwide sometime in February, anywhere from mid to late February. Um, yeah, there will be a, an updated set of class rules coming out before the end of February, which will include the dimensions for the A plus rig uh, and any other changes required to to bring the version six into class. Uh, we'll also update quite a lot of the wording in the rules. That when we wrote the 95 rules, I think the, the grammar was a, a lot better than the 65 rules. Things that are more accurately defined. So we'll transfer that to the 65 rule. But essentially nothing's changing apart from the addition of uh, the, the A plus rig. And as, as all the new rig components come from Joy's Way, they're automatically included in the, in the rules for use on older boats. Peter, you could, to answer your question, you could use a 7.4 LiPo with a UBEC um, if you wanted to, but I mean, that's, that's totally up to you as long as the battery still got away 48 grams and it's still, according to class rules, so yeah. as long as it meets the minimum class standards, you can use a UBEC, a LiPo with a UBEC if you want to. Uh, cause, but you're going to have to, they are low voltage servos, so you're going to have to, you know, be aware of that when you set up a boat. Yeah, I mean we do use the boat with uh, life batteries which do charge to uh, over 7 volts. Not ha never had a problem with that, but yeah, I think LiPo's, a fully charged LiPo would be just too much. Yeah. Um, 
the A plus rigs aren't going to be available until a little later. They didn't ship with the, most of the containers from the distributors, um, mostly because they were working so hard to get the boat out to everybody and make sure we're all launching at the same time this year. Uh, I think I think there will be uh, certainly in the UK they'll be flying the rig kits in. So yeah, they'll, they'll be flying. Arrive. They'll be flying the rig kits into everybody after we get our container shipments. But it'll probably be a couple weeks after that. So I wouldn't I wouldn't look for them to be available until probably about the beginning of first or second week of March, realistically. Yeah. Um, but if anybody else has any questions, we're more than glad to ask, answer them. Yeah, I think in the UK with the A plus rig, we'll make a decision on when the rig becomes a class legal rig for official DF events. Possibly at the meeting, one of our meetings in the in May. So to give people a couple of months to get the rigs, get used to them before it becomes a class legal rig, and it's up to other countries to decide on uh, on their own schedules for that. Somebody had asked earlier, the sales, the sales do ship flat. Yeah, uh, the, just like yeah. that's one of the big deals of that retail box. Yeah, you can seven. open it, Mike. Um, the sales good. ship flat, so they're not going to come rolled up. Uh, it's one of, it's one of the you can see from this retail box. This is what it looks like. And show the new rules too. Yeah. It's going to come ship in the cardboard like that. Show the new, uh, show them the new instruction. That's huge. And then one of the big features that we haven't even really talked about is Mike, Buzz, and team have basically completely redone the Dragon Force manual to the standard of what we did with the Dragon Flight manual. So it's going to be far easier for somebody that's brand new to build this boat with the instructions that we've got out here. Yeah, we've got photos showing you a, a nicely set up rig, the cheating dimensions. Full mast rake and rigging dimensions, so everything, it's not all in one place in the instructions, it's as you go through, everything is properly defined. So, if, as I said, if you follow the instructions, you should have a good boat by the end of it. So, again, all the changes that have been made to this are, have been with the, with the, you know, we don't want to change the basic structure of the Dragon Force, we want to keep it as one of the premier entry-level boats in sailing. And we've tried to make the class stronger with coming out with a better product out of the box. So, you know, full credit to John for and Joy's Way for making it happen. Um, uh, is there anything new on the 95? Uh, no, nothing new at the moment. Uh, the boat will just carry on as is for, I think, most of this year. We've got a few small points to discuss with them at the show here, but nothing that uh, materially affects the boat yet. So no, no rhythm need to do anything. Possibly small things like small things like the main sheet ring needs to be smoother. Uh, it's just details like that which don't need new part numbers. They just need stepping up on the next production run. But no, nothing, no major changes planned at all for the 95. It may be possible in future that the new gooseneck assembly gets applied to it, but that won't be for uh, over a year. So, no, no changes to the 95. So anyway, guys, um, I am going to publish a PDF of the manual, which I have, and uh, probably try to publish some more pictures of the, of the actual 65 as we, you know, as we can over the next few days. Um, and as, over over the months, we'll be publishing on the Dragon World website a lot more information that, as we have with the 95 on sail numbering, uh, all more that. templates yeah, with, for with the 65 templates. and everything yeah, else. So people know how to we'll match all the information to the 95. Right. With the 65. I mean, there's not a lot of off-the-shelf boats in the world that provide class support like the Dragon Dragon Racing products. That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, it requires a lot of time to put it there, but uh, I hope it's all useful to you. Yeah, sail, sail numbering is always an issue. Clarity of sail numbers uh, causes a lot of problems at events. So we do publish that information to try and make it as easy for the race organisers to run events. So if you would make your sail numbers as clear as possible, everybody would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Daryl, to answer your question, the new deck eyes, there's no new, they're not new. It's, no, it's, it's the just one of these We're through. using the process on these deck eyes, uh, just like we did on the Dragon Flight. There's actually a plastic sheet inserted in the new mold, plastic plug, so that when the deck, there's no need to epoxy the deck eyes. When you, when you, when it's, when, the, when it comes assembled, it's already waterproof. Yeah, the old, uh, on the old hill, the deck eyes just screwed into the plastic skin, basically. So yeah, you needed some extra reinforcements in there, but now they're screwing into a, a solid plastic plug that is molded into the boat itself when it's blow molded. So there's no chance of, well, there should be no chance of water ingress through those through the deck eyes now. Right, and then you can kind of see what we're talking about. If you look at this deck eye right here, um, you can see they, this one's a little different than the other ones because they put it on the outside only because uh, this is so close to the edge. They didn't want to affect the mold on the boat. So there's a lot of thought that's gone into everything on the boat, but I think people really like the recessed deck track. It's going to keep things from snagging as easy. I know there's a small thing that you probably can't see here, but we've got the graduated scale on the sliding deck plate here as on the 95. Just for... Uh, Easy calibration of your mass rig, and again, that's covered in the instructions as to where to put that. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to post it. Feel free to share it. Um, also, you know, we'll be online, offline, taking questions as needed. So uh, feel free to discuss, and uh, we're really glad you could join us and. Uh, we hope you have fun with the new Dragon 465. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Good to talk to you. Uh, put a face to the name, I suppose, for a lot of people. We're all big and ugly, so don't argue with us. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all right, guys. Thanks.